Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Let's learn how to make a simple AI driver in Unity. This is a simple AI that works on top of any car controller in order to make the unit go to a target position. This is actually something that I had to make recently. I participated in the Mixin Game Jam where I made a very interesting racing RTS and as such I need the cars to be able to drive themselves to reach a target position. You can go watch that video to see this AI being used as part of a complete game. Now, the most awesome thing about this AI driver is how it can work with any car controller. All it needs is to be able to give commands to accelerate, brake, and turn. So, as long as your car controller exposes those functions, then this can work on top of anything. For example, I also made the machine learning AI driver a while ago, which also uses the same underlying car driver. So, this is what we're going to build. Over here is my car, and it's set to follow the mouse position, so as I click, I can move the target and place it in there. And no matter where I place it, you can see, yep, the car does move along with it. Now, the trickiest thing about making an AR driver is how cars turn. So usually, when making AI for some humanoid units, they essentially just turn instantly. However, cars don't really work like that. They need to turn and go forward at the same time. So as I move the mouse straight in there, yep, instead of rotating instantly, the car needs to move forward and rotate at the same time. Then if I place the mouse just slightly behind the car, yep, the car reverses onto it. However, if I put the target quite a bit further, then the car is smart enough in order to do a 180 and go towards there. Here is the car controller that I'm using. As I said, how it's implemented isn't relevant to what we're trying to do here. All that matters is that we have this function where I can set it a certain forward amount and turn amount. So I can tell it to go forward, reverse, turn left or turn right. I even have a player car driver which works on top of that same car driver. And now we're also going to build an AI on top of it. So both the player and the AI use the same underlying car driver script. Learn all about VR and AR with the Patreon sponsor, XR Bootcamp. It's a 6-8 to eight week bootcamp taught by industry professionals. Learn how to interact in VR, optimize your rendering, and learn about dots. Check them out at xrbootcamp.com and use the coupon CM10 to get 10% off any of the master classes. So let's begin by creating a new c -sharp script. Let's name this the Car Driver AI. And over here, let's disable the player and set Enable the AI Driver. And just attach a script onto it. So here in the inspector, you can see they are both pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is this script right here. So we have our basic script. Now for starters, let's first grab our car driver. So just the way you get components since it's on the same game object. And now all we need to do is interact with that function that we saw. So let's make a private void update. And on update, let's define a certain forward amount, also a turn amount. And then just go into the car driver in order to set the inputs, passing this for the mount and this turn amount. Okay, so that's pretty much all we need to do. So just for testing, let's try setting both of these to one to see what happens. And yep, there's the car constantly going forward and turning to the right. All right, so far so good. Now for testing, the first thing we need is some sort of target position. So let's keep track of that. And I've got this nice game object placed in the world, so we're going to use that as our target. So here, let's make a private vector 3 for the target position. And let's make a function to set it. Let's make it public, so in the future, when we use the script, we can give it a target to go to. All right, so very basic. And now just for testing, let's use that transform that we saw. So just make it a serialized field so we can set it in the editor. And then here on every update, just call set target position, access that transform and grab the position. So then here in the editor, I'm just going to drag that transform position. Okay, so far so good. Now let's begin by testing if the target is in front or behind of the car. And for that, we can use the dot product. So first of all, let's default these just to zero. Okay, so then we do a dot product. We use vector3 dot. This takes essentially a forward vector and a direction vector. So let's call it the direction. So a vector3 for the dare to the move position. So we grab our target position, we subtract our current transform position and then normalize. It. Okay, we have our direction. So for the dot product, we use this transform forward and then that direction and this returns a float for our dot product. Now, the way the dot product works is if it's above zero, then the target is in front, and if it's under zero, then it's behind. We can add a debug.log to see this in action. So just a debug log on the dot so we can see. 
And yep, down there in the console, we can see. So the target is right in front of the car, so we've got a one. So if I move the target, in there we've got a one. And as I move to be perfectly perpendicular, and all of a sudden it starts going towards zero. And if it's behind the car, then we got a negative. And if it's straight behind, we've got minus one. So this is the dot product, very useful. So we're going to use this to drive forwards or backwards. If it's positive, we drive forwards. If it's negative, we drive backwards. And by the way, the way that I'm controlling this mouse target is with a very simple script. So here it is, just got a reference to the transform. Then I also have some simple logic to either drop it or keep following the mouse. And here just a function to get the mouse position. So it just does this. It does a camera screen to ray point on the mouse position. Then it does a ray cast whilst hitting the collider that is on the terrain object. And if there's a hit, then simply have the raycast hit. So just a very basic script just so I can move this target around. All right, so here let's use the dot product. So we test if dot product, if it is bigger than zero, then the target is in front. So let's simply set for the mount to one F. And if not, then the target is behind. So we set it just to minus one F. And just with this, it should already reach the target. Let's see. And yep, there it is. It has the target and goes straight towards it. So as I move target, go in there, Yep, he goes and then he reverses and so on. If I put it behind, yep, always reverse, put it in front, and he always tries to go forward. All right, so far so good. Now for turning, and by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel. In order to do that, we're going to calculate the angle towards the target position. So for that, we can use the vector three and use the function signed angle. Make sure you use the signed angle and not the angle since we do want a signed value. In order to get the sine angle, let's compare this transform forward, so where the car is pointing, compare it with the direction towards the move position, and the axis is the up axis, so vector 3 dot up. So we do, and this is our angle towards our direction. And again, we can add a log to see what this does. So angle to there, and let's simply come this out so the car doesn't move, let's see. So there it is, and if the target is to the right of the car, then we got a positive value, and if it's to the left, then we got a negative value. All right, so that's how we're going to use it. So in here, very simple, just if the angle to the air, if it is a positive number, then essentially we want to turn right. So set the turn amount into 1F, we want to turn right. And if not, then set the turn amount into minus 1F, so that we can turn left. And then we just run this. Okay, so just like this, we should be able to see the car correctly turn to reach the target. So there he goes, and as I move the target, put it in there, yep, he's indeed turning around. So he's going forward, and if he goes, then he starts to go backwards. Yep, there you go, and it's constantly going towards it. All right, so all the logic is indeed working. So the logic is indeed working, but the biggest issue is that it never stops. So the car is constantly trying to reach exactly on top of the target, so we need to add some type of stopping distance. So over here, we've got all this logic. Okay, so far so good. But before we do, let's calculate the direction towards the target. So just do a basic distance to target, and we do a vector three dot distance, calculate from this transform position towards the target position. Then just define a certain reach target distance. So if the distance is bigger than the reach target distance, then that means that the target is too far. So if it is, then we're going to do all of this logic. And if not, then we have reached a target. All right, so let's see if this works. So there it is, the car following the target. And if I just stop the target and see the car, yep, goes, reverses. And now it's an issue with the braking speed. But yep, once he gets within there, yep, he's completely still. All right, everything worked. Now the issue, as we saw, is that essentially it overshoots the target, so it keeps going and then it just overshoots. So for that, let's engage the brakes if we are going a bit too far. So when we have reached the target, let's hit the brakes if we're going a bit too far. So we'll go into the car driver in order to get the speed. And if it's above a certain amount, so if it's going a bit too fast, then instead of just not accelerating, let's actually brake. So for the amount, set it to minus one in order to actually brake. And if not, then, yep, we just set it to zero. Okay, so there he is, and as soon as I stop, yep, there you go, you see that he did hit the brakes a bit more. All right, so that's a bit better. Now, just one thing here, which is if we put the target behind it, yep, he reverses towards the target, which is good, but if we put the target way behind it, yep, he still does the same thing. 
Now, if the target is way too far behind, then we really want the car to be able to do a 180 in order to reach a target as opposed to just constantly reversing. So let's do that. So first of all, we see when we are reversing. So here it is, if the dot product is under zero. So if it is, let's check if it's too far to reverse. So we just check if the current distance is bigger than a certain amount. If so, then it's too far to reverse. So we go forwards instead of backwards. Okay, so there he is. He's right on top of the target. Now, if I move just a little bit, yep, he just reverses onto it. Okay. And if I put way too much, yep, there you go. He goes forward, does a 180 and then goes in there. All right. So the logic is indeed working. Yep, there you go. Awesome. Now, another thing is with regards to reaching the target position. So if the current target distance is big enough, so like this, it's pretty big. If so, then it works pretty fine. So I can put it quite a bit far and yep, he overshoots a bit, but then reverses onto it. However, if I put this as a much smaller value, now the issue is that when I put it, if the car has enough speed, he goes and pretty much always instantly overshoots it. Now, the reason for that is because he's really only hitting the brakes if he is already within the stopping distance. So let's add some more logic in order to make it hit the brakes before it actually reaches the target. So here, if the target is in front, so here we compare our current distance to the target. And if it is within a certain stopping distance, which is bigger than the reach target distance, if so, then we also test the speed. So if the car is going a bit too fast, then we head on the brakes. So this should stop the car from constantly overshooting the target. Let's test. So here it is. Let's pick up some speed. So just constantly go and I'll stop. And yep, there you go. You saw how he hit the brakes a bit. And yep, now it's working much better. So even if the car is going really fast, it still hits the brakes in order to try to reach there on time. Okay, so the car driver is pretty much done. Now let's just test adding some more AI drivers as well as the player. So just duplicate a bunch more cars and just enable the player. And yep, there they go, they immediately try to get there. So I can control my player, I can drive around. Yep, now I can say, okay, all of you go down there. And as I go and as I turn, and yep, they all reach the target position. So wherever I tell them to go, yep, they all go straight towards there. All right, so here you can see a really nice car driver AI. Go watch the racing RTS video to see where I put this system to use in a complete game. This is a very simple script and it works great for getting some AI cars onto a target position. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Post any questions I have in the comments and I'll see you next time.